so today we're going to be looking for morel mushrooms and I've been finding some this year so far underneath these cedar trees and such and we're going to be going deeper into the woods and seeing uh, what we can find got my mesh bag I've uh, been carrying them in this because you know as you're carrying the mushrooms you find spore will leak through this and uh, maybe help next year's crop to get going so um, Anyway, let's go deeper in the woods and see what we can find. Now, um, let's point out here as far as looking uh, for morels. People say, where do you find them? You know, in, I can only speak for myself where I'm at in uh, southeast Oklahoma here in uh, southern Hughes County. Uh, along any of these uh, creeks and such that run into the Canadian River, that's where I... Uh, generally find them now what kind of trees do I find them under um, in this area that I'm at uh, primarily it's under cedar trees now I go up to a higher elevation out of these uh, creek bottoms and I tend to find them uh, under the oak trees up there oaks and around brush piles and stuff so it just depends on what area that I'm that I'm looking in. All right. Well, I already see a couple under there and more. So let's go in here and see. There's a couple right there and one right there. So these are very well camouflaged. And if you take your eyes off of them, they do this disappearing act. Got this one here. Pretty nice little morel. Put that in the bag. All right, so got another little gray morel right there. Got to really pay attention because when they're out here like this, it's easy to either miss them or step on them. Here's one coming up out of the ground right here. It's a pretty good size. Up there. thought I saw another one over here a minute ago. That's a pretty nice little morel. And the leaves are up here underneath the briars. Pretty good one up there, and there's one further in. So there's a couple of pretty nice ones. Okay, here's one way up under, way up under this cedar tree here. They do like to uh, grow in hard to reach areas. Okay, uh, all this area right here that I'm showing you underneath these cedars, I generally uh, have good luck finding morels down in here. I've got to find a few already, not a lot, but um, usually deeper in is where I find the bulk of them. So we're going to cross this creek here and go up under these cedars and see if we can find a few more. Here's a really nice big one here. And another one right here. They're two really nice sized golden morels there. Notice how gold those are. Um, you know you may find them. There may be uh, gold like this. Uh, some of them that I found earlier today are gray. Sometimes you can find them, they're kind of black. So they all taste great. They're all morels. So it's looking good today so far. Let's go see what else we can find. Okay, I wanted to stop and show you guys a couple of the different types of morels that I found today that are 
uh, very common around here. I told you they find them a lot of times in the gold like this or the gray. Uh, both taste great. The goldens, I find them, they're usually bigger, you know, or get bigger. I can't tell the difference in the taste, but, um, you know, you can also find them sometimes in a black. I've not found any black ones down here. Uh, but the golden morels and these gray morels are the most common um, that I find down here. So I just wanted to stop and give you a close look at um, the gold one, the gold and the gray side by side there. There's a golden morel and a gray morel. Okay, just show you how they, uh, how well hid they can be. This is underneath this cedar here. And there is one right there. Tell you, when you're going up under these cedars and in this brush, you want to really keep in mind um, for venomous uh, snakes. There's a lot of copperheads out here. Look at that. That's a pretty gray morel right there. Well, I'm under here. Do I see any more? Nope. Um, Oops, I put my knee down on a briar thorn there. But yeah, um, like I say, when you're reaching up under these cedars and such for a morel, keep in mind in the early spring, the uh, snakes will be out. Like, you know, and most of them, you're nothing to be concerned about, like the rat snakes, king snakes, and such as that. But there's also uh, copperheads and the uh, the occasional rattlesnake here where I'm at, the copperhead is the most uh, numerous little tit viper. And actually, a copperhead is my favorite snake, period. I don't kill them. I just let them do their thing. But they like to get in these cedar trees and up under there, and they're very, very camouflaged. So you don't want to inadvertently reach your hand where one is being still so he thinks you don't see him and get bitten so all right well i see another morel right there see if you see it not a very big one right there And then we take a look around, see if there's another one right here. Finding them mostly in ones and twos. Not, I'm not finding like big uh, piles of them. It's making me, uh, making me work for them. That's okay. I, I enjoy the, the hike. So, now let's go on a little further in and see what we find. Okay, and speaking of stepping over one, I just stepped right over the top of this one and didn't even see it. So right then. So, let's like say I'm going to retrace my steps on the way out of here and see how many I just might have missed because I missed that one and it was right in front of me. Can't tell you how many times that I've been hunting morels and uh, get home and start um, editing the video and see on the ground uh, morels that I missed that were just like right in front of me. So uh, that's why uh, I don't just make one pass through. I go through uh, once and uh, try to re-step, retrace my steps on the way out because a lot of times I'll find find more of them. Man, I tell you what, that is a nice, nice size uh, morel right there. Look at that. Oh, that is really nice. Yeah, that is a really, really nice one there. Now look at that. That is a nice big golden morel. Put that in the bag.
starting to find some pretty good size ones here. There's one right over there and one there. And I'm going to go cut these off before I lose them. Tell you what, these things are masters at disappearing when you take your eyes off of them. That's another nice size golden morel. And again, this is these are under under cedar trees. Bags starting to fill up. Let's go back and get that other one. Look around and see if there's any more right here. Alright. Put it out over here. There's another. Nice. Big Moretta. How about that? Hey, I tell you, a technique that I like to use that works well for me, instead of just staring real hard at an area, um, I like to get down, kneel down about ground level and just slowly kind of uh, do a panorama of the area. And if they're by, a lot of times you'll see them kind of poking up above vegetation. Oh, and I just see two nice ones right ahead of me. And walking toward them, I keep a uh, straight line toward them. And also take a look around the area and see if there's more. I haven't been finding them in big, um, large clumps. They've been one or two here, one or two there. But I probably found about 40 or so. Um, I don't see any more just right here. So, all right, let's... Go up to these two and now I saw these from pretty good ways back. But kneeling down and kind of staring ahead. I could see them kind of sticking up above the leaves and stuff over here, which a lot of times that's how you how you found them. These have been up for a few days, they're dry, but Put them in water, soak them overnight. Salt water is what I do. And they are just as good as if you, just as fresh as the other. All right, let's go a little deeper, see if we can find some more. Today's been a, a pretty, pretty productive uh, hunt. I've um, got quite a few in the bag right there, and some of them really good size ones. So when I get them home, I will um, wash them off real good in the sink and um, soak them overnight in, in salt water. And if something happens, you can't get to them. Uh, the next day you can let them soak for a couple of days it doesn't hurt anything and then i will slice them up batter them put them on a cookie sheet in the freezer when they get frozen i'll take them out and break them off that cookie sheet put them in ziploc bags or freezer bags uh, and have them ready to eat later on well i guess that's about it for today i've had a pretty successful uh morel mushroom hunt and i hope you've enjoyed coming along with me found a pretty good size a few uh these big golden morels like these two and uh several of these smaller uh gray morels like i said hope y'all's enjoyed coming along with me i've probably found around oh 50 or 60 i'll count them when i get home want to want to give a shout out to my son elijah he designed and made these uh t-shirts for me with Dave's Outdoor Channel and this one's got some morel mushrooms on it and he's designed a few more that have different like wildlife and such on them so 
a uh, big thanks to Elijah for uh, designing these. Um, I'm going to take these home and uh, soak them in some salt water, slice them up, batter them, put them in the freezer. I'm going to eat a few of them too. So um, anyway, like I said, hope you've enjoyed coming along. And uh, till next time, you guys take care. And when you get a chance, get outside and enjoy nature.